Hi there, Mark here from Club365. So I've got something really, really cool to show you today. If you're a Claude user and you've ever wanted to be able to do things like talk to your email, talk to your backend systems and have it without even leaving Claude, then there's a brilliant thing that's dropped and it's called the Model Context Protocol or MCP for short. So what the MCP allows you to do is during the conversation you have with Claude, you're allowed to call out to what they call tools. Now you can develop these tools yourself and I've developed one for the purposes of this demo that talks to my Microsoft 365 email. And what Claude will do when it realizes it needs to use a tool, so for example, if I was to say, get me my last five emails, which I'm gonna show you shortly, Claude will know because it's an LLM at the back of it, I have created and registered a tool with it that can go off to Microsoft 365, get my email and present it all in Claude without me ever having to leave Claude. And I honestly believe this is the start of something really, really big. For example, what I will show you here is I've got the ability to bring back my email, but I've also got the ability to send email. I've got the ability to create new mail rules. I've got the ability to go and organize my email. So Claude, because I've implemented these methods that talk to the Microsoft Graph, Claude can use them all. And obviously we have to give it permission as you'll see here, but it's absolutely stunning. So let me just show you. So what I've done here is I've just SAS Claude. I've uploaded a document that's all about the model context protocol, which hopefully if you have a read of that, will tell you a bit more about it. All we need to know for the purposes of this demonstration, it's a piece of software that you register with Claude that gives Claude the ability to go to third party services, both pushing and pulling data. And because it's standard and it's completely open source, other vendors can pull that in. So let's show you the demo. So I've created a tool. So you can see the tools here that I've created. So I've got tools that I've created to bulk process emails. So for example, if I want to go and delete all my emails or go and rename them, I can do. I can create email drafts. I made it drafts because obviously this is a testing thing and I'm using it on my one of my email accounts. I didn't want to go and send an email to people in case there was a bug in it. So all I do is I create drafts. I can create email rules as well. So what I can do to Claude is I'll show you is I can say, please look at my email. It's completely and utterly a com total mess. Give me ways that I can organize it and also create the rule for me to do that. And it will create the rule and deploy it for you so your email stays organized. I, I've also been playing around of because we've got a WordPress site, so I've done it so that I can create WordPress posts. I can create email reply drafts. I can delete WordPress posts. I can look up folders. I've also got customers on here for WooCommerce. I've, got, I've been playing around, as you can see. So there's the tools I've now registered with Claude. So let's see what we can do. So what I want to do is I want to say, uh, please list my last five emails. So let's see what we can do. Now that's going to go off to the Microsoft Graph. As you can see, the, you can see the workings here. Here's your last five emails. And so you can see I've got one about the power up step up. So we get notification when people uh, graduate on our academy. Uh, I've also... I was playing yesterday, which is something I'll show you in a second. I got an email about Gerald the Duck, which doesn't make any sense now, but it will do soon. So you can see there, I've now got information coming back from Microsoft Outlook. So please suggest ways that I can clean up my mailbox because there's a lot of mail in it and create a mail rule for me. So here we go, Let's see what it does with that. And so the first time you use any tool, this is kind of important. What it always does, it prompts you for permission to use the tool. So you always have to click this. So I think possibly they'll improve that in the future, but that's what it does today. So based on the email analysis, I'll help you analyze your mailbox and suggest some cleanup strategies. And then help create an email role to highlight. So first, let's analyze your email. So what it's done, based on the analysis, I'll help you create a cleaning strategy and set up, oh, hang on, it's going too fast and set up an email role, I, I notice you have several messages from Club365 and webinar notifications. So if I just pull in my email here, you can see there, I've got a lot of notifications to Club365, obviously, because we run the academy. Uh, I've got information from SharePoint as well. And they're, they're a total mess, I want them cleaned up. So let's get that out of the way. So let's create a role to automatically organize incoming emails from Club365. So what it's done there, it's gone to search for Cloud 365, realize I don't have this folder. I don't think I do anyway. Uh, so now let's create a email rule 
from Microsoft 365 local. So what she's going to do, it'll create the email rule, say, and it's going to be called Club 365 Organizer and create the rule. So I think it's actually done it. So let's bring up my email back and let's have a look at rules. Edit rules. It was called Club 365 Organizer. Let's pull that over. There it is. So let's see what it's done. So if the sender address contains the words club365.com and the message was sent with normal important importance, apply the category team and mark the message as read. So that's perfect. So any new email I get in, it's decided that's the thing to do. And you get the idea. I'm not going to go to the full thing. I did some really wonderful things yesterday where it created me folders and it was putting them into different folders under certain rules. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how you can use a Claude project which has knowledge and in this case, it's got knowledge about Gerald the Duck, which is completely fabricated, made up information. And I've just telling you about what he knows it here. So Gerald the Duck's based in Lake Windermere. He was born on February 29th, 2020. So it's all completely random Google. And what I've done is if I show you an email I've got in. So I've asked here, hi there, can you answer these? And these are very specific questions that are only available in that knowledge base. And if we didn't have that knowledge base, as you've probably seen when you use anything like Claude or ChatGPT, it will probably make stuff up. But I want it to be specific. So what I want to do now is I want to say, do you have an email about Gerald the Duck? Okay, let's see what it's got. So hopefully it's going to go off to my Microsoft 365 email now. And you can see there's an email there taught by Gerald the Duck. So yes, I found an email about Gerald the Duck. Okay, so using your knowledge about Gerald, please reply, compose, whoops a daisy, compose a draft reply and answer that, answer the questions, the questions, right? So what it should be doing, it should read that email with all those questions in. It's going to use its knowledge in the knowledge base and hopefully we're going to have a reply. So it's trying to compose an email draft, which is cool. I've actually got another one, which is reply, which is currently in development. Okay, so we go back to my email now. It's 11.46 uh, and what I've got is yes, I could improve the format and I could even tell Claude to improve the format. So you can see there, now it's answered the questions based on its knowledge, all about Gerald the Duck. Uh, so this is incredible. And I think this is actually going to be quite profound because it reminds me so much of the time when the internet first came out. So before we had web pages, for anybody who's as old as me, you'll remember there was news groups and we used to just communicate on news groups and see messages. But then the internet itself that we know today was born. Now, everybody's typed in HTTP on their browser and I'm sure they're very, very familiar what it is. And that's a standard protocol for transfer information over the internet. And then web pages are generally drawn in something called HTML. And because we've agreed on an open standard, it meant that all of the technology providers out there, your Microsoft, your Amazons, all of the web design companies are all able to develop to a known standard. And you can guarantee that your browser is going to display that web page regardless of what technology it's come from. And I think, I'm pretty sure if AI is going to take off, something like this MCP, the Model Context Protocol, is going to be the HTTP for AI. Because the minute we allow vendors like Microsoft or vendors like OpenAI or Anthropic or Google Gemini to create a walled garden so that we can only get to their data and we can only get to third party data in the way they dictate, it means that we've lost the flexibility and we've tied into one vendor. So I think what the vendors are going to have to do, and this is fantastic because Anthropic have actually open sourced this, they're going to have to start supporting something like this. If not this, then they're going to have to agree on an open standard for giving AI a way to connect to our third party systems and be able to pull the data and also push the data. And then once you get to that point, we can have some wonderful, wonderful, what they call agentic AI experiences regardless of what tool you use, whether it's ChatGPT, Copilot or Claude, or something that a company like me could have created. The MCP is this portable framework that we can all use in, inside of our LLMs. And I think the sooner that the vendors get together and agree on that standard and say, we're all gonna do it, is the better because it's gonna happen. And if one particular vendor decides they're not gonna do it, they're gonna fail. 
And if you don't believe me, think about the time with, if you heard of Flash, if you're young, you probably won't have heard of Flash, but Flash was all the big thing. It was done by Adobe and it was a different way of presenting web pages. It was very much a rich UI experience, but it wasn't HTML. And there was also Microsoft did their own something called Silverlight. And to be honest, they were better and easier to develop because I'm a developer than HTML. However, they failed because it wasn't an open standard and they couldn't get the momentum of everybody using it. So HTML has still won through. We got HTML5, which did most of what Flash and uh, Silverlight do anyway. So that one, and I think the same is going to happen for these AI tools. They're going to have to support it. And this MCP is in its early stages. Like, for example, in order to create this MCP server that talks to my Microsoft email, it doesn't support the authentication required by Microsoft. So I've actually code that myself in order to be able to authenticate to my Microsoft email to do it. But that's all going to come online. You can also do things like create in your server, create pre-baked prompts. So, for example, I could have had a prompt in here, which is... Uh, Please tidy up my email and use these five category systems for categorizing my email based on whether they're notifications, whether they're marketing, or whether they are important and need to be actioned on. So you can even do that. So I think the world is going to change. It's going to change rapidly. And I've got a big bet that this MCP is the start of something really, really big. If you want to know more, what we're thinking about doing is actually releasing the code that talks to Microsoft 365 so that you can use it in Claude. Hope you found that useful. Hope you're excited as I am. That's over and out from me, Mark at Club 365.